Hello, welcome back to another instructional video. This time we're looking at the modern great Agricola. Now Agricola is a medium to light Euro game, I suppose slightly more on the medium side. It's a really, really great game. It's obviously hugely popular on Board Game Geek, and it's seen as somewhat of a gateway game into some of the more sort of meatier subjects of board gaming. The reason I think it's been so successful and the reason it's such a great gateway game is because whilst you have got this uh, quite deep worker placement mechanic that goes through Agricola, it all ties back to you building a farm. So even if you aren't really brilliant at understanding the rules, you know that you need to fence off your animals, you know that you need to plant your crops in order to get them back. And it's that link to the theme that I think really makes this game stand out as such a brilliant game over the test of time. So without further ado, let's set up the board and have a look at how the game plays. So, you join me with the board laid out uh, to start setting up the game. Technically, this board here should actually be over in uh, this location here, but I actually have a very small table, um, and it's still showing you how the, how the board's laid out. So it won't make a great deal of difference to this instructional video, but just appreciate that normally you, you create a, a layout of four boards in a row. You can see lots of empty spaces that we're going to have to fill. The first are these six spaces, and then basically we're going to put actions down here, which de are de dependent on how many players you have. So I'm setting this up for a four-player game. Now you'll be given a, a deck of cards which have um, some numbers in them. So these are the four-player cards, there's six of them, so they're going to fill out all six spaces. Um, be careful, the other side has this family symbol icon, and as you can see on the other side we have the family the family game, which makes for an easier game. Um, I very much enjoy the family game, and it just lets you play with sort of younger kids. I would still say they need to be about eight or, or maybe nine. Um, you've got other ones, so the three player would get less actions, and uh, they're not as powerful. The five player would have more actions. So they, the dynamic of the game does change with the, uh, the number of players you have. So we're going to place these ones out, these will be actions that people can take and effectively your worker placement mechanic is simply that you'll go to these spaces and you will take whatever uh, resources they have. So if we zoom in on one and see exactly what we mean by that, we can see over here we have the space which says take one reed, one stone and one food. So if I was to actually place my worker on this space, I would be able to take that action straight away. So I'll put my worker on there and I'll be able to take the one read, the one stone and the food. I am stepping on the toes of how the game works at this point. But the, uh, of course the mechanic here is that I've denied uh, the, uh, uh, everyone else from going on that space for this round, which is quite nice. So those six are out. The other bit we're going to have to deal with is these home improvements at the top of the, uh, of the board. Okay, So normally they'll be at the side. And you can see we've got a number of home improvements here. These are standard. They do not change as the game um, progresses. So once they're gone, they're gone. We've got the pottery, which means that you can collect clay and turn clay into pots. And that effectively means people will pay you food for your lovely pots. The basket maker. Collect reed and make lovely baskets. And people will pay you food for the lovely baskets. The joinery. Hmm, we collect wood and so on and so forth you'll notice that there's a bit of an anatomy to the card. So here we have the victory points it will score. And this is a victory point game. Around, for me, around 40 points is, is a good showing. So that's what we're hoping for. And here you've got the cost to make it. So this requires two wood and two stone. So it's quite clear as to what you need. And there's a little bit of text underneath telling you exactly what it means. So in each harvest you can use the joinery to convert one wood into a, uh, uh, to a food or two food. And uh, you get to have extra victory points if you have wood at the end of the game because you will actually end up uh, having loads of cool chairs and stuff like that. The ovens are very interesting, they turn grain into lots of food uh, and then at the top we have the cooking hearths and the fireplaces. So the fireplaces is a, a basic 
uh, cooking mechanism, but that turns animals into food as well as uh, grain and vegetables. So obviously sometimes um, people will want to focus on killing off animals and getting the delicious, delicious uh, sheep meat or whatever, and some people might just focus on grain. I tend to focus on grain, uh, but it's down to an individual preference. The well is a bit of a strange one. It gives you a little bit of food, but it gives you lots of victory points. So generally it's a good building to build if you, if you have the, uh, the resources. And you'll see that they're sort of subtly different. So our stone oven lets us turn uh, two grain into four food each. So we can get up to eight grain from that. The clay oven only lets us do it once actually. Uh, but we get to get five food out. So we get more efficient action from the clay oven, but we only get one of them, um, which might not be very useful. So, at this point, we've set up the six standard actions. We've also set up the, uh, the major improvements, as these are known, and, and they will be built as the time goes by. Now you'll need to take this daunting deck of cards, and they start in stage one, and you will need to shuffle the stage one, you know, and then go into stage two, and so on and so forth. And these will go out into the main area. I believe you actually place them on the board as you go. Uh, it really doesn't matter. I, I tend to place them all out at once. So we've got stage one, stage one, stage one, stage one, stage two, stage two, stage two, stage three, stage three, stage four, stage four, stage five, stage five and then stage six. So you'll notice that the uh, the turns, the rounds, there's less in each stage. And that's because more people will have more workers. So actually you will end up doing quite a lot in stage five, even though you've got half the number of uh, turns. And on the first go, as it were, we flip this guy over and we get an extra action. So you've always got these six, in addition, you've got this one, which lets you build rooms. This one lets you become the starting player. And you get something called a minor improvement, which we haven't touched upon yet. This will give you some grain, which you can subsequently turn into, um, into obviously, more grain. This lets you plough a field. We can't plant our grain until we have a field. This gets you an occupation, or it gets you to play on occupation, which is very powerful. This gets you two food. It's not a bad move if you're desperate to feed your workers. This gets you lots of wood, clay, reed, and this gets you some food for fishing. And as we go through the game, more and more actions will come out. So initially, the three wood space, you can't go wrong with three wood, trust me, uh, is a very powerful action. But later on, when we get the ability to uh, breed and have more kids and stuff, um, maybe the wood space won't be so juicy. Maybe we want stone, or maybe we want to go and get an animal, or things like that. The other really important concept is the idea of the harvest phase. So you notice after four rounds, we're going to have something called the harvest phase, which is down here. And then three rounds, we'll have another harvest phase, two rounds, so the harvests speed up. The harvest phase is an interesting phase. You have to feed your workers. And if you don't feed your workers, Okay, so you'll have two workers to start with, and each of them eats two food. So I need four food at the end of turn four, or I will be in trouble. I'll get something called a begging card. Um, so that's for each missing food. So potentially I'll get two of those if I hadn't fed them properly. And you'll notice that that's minus three victory points. Now I just told you that 40, when I'm playing, can win the game. So that's really, really bad. So at this harvest phase we'll need lots of food. And as you get more workers out, you'll need more food and that can cause problems later on in the game. Also, in the harvest phase, any crops you've planted will, uh, will, will come back, you'll harvest them, as, <laughs> as the phase, is, uh, as the phase <laughs> implies. And if you have any animals and you have two sheep, for example, then actually your sheep will have a baby sheep, which is nice. However, if you have Four sheep, your sheep will still only have one baby sheep. They won't have uh, they won't have two baby sheep. They only ever have one baby. So that's the setup. We've set up the uh, the actual main board. Let's have a look at a player board and look at some of these things, uh, these minor um, improvements and the occupations that we've mentioned earlier. So here we have a one-player board set up. Obviously, we'd have four for the four-player game. 
Now, on your board, you have these spaces, which represent the spaces of your farm. You've got these two sort of strange sort of wooden spaces, and this is where you put your two wooden rooms. So you're going to start the game with two wooden rooms. As you go on, you might upgrade them to clay rooms. You might even upgrade them to stone rooms. And basically, that will get you victory points. There is an expansion that makes that more important, but really, it's just points for doing that at this point. You will also have a, a, a load of other things. We've got some more people here, which uh, we will have. Hopefully, if we can build more rooms, we'll be able to have some kids. You've got some fences, so you can start fencing off parts of your uh, farmyard as time goes by. Now, I like getting lots of animals and getting a farm that looks like a farm, but in reality, that's not necessarily the best move. Some of the best players I've seen of Agricola will have virtually no farm um, uh, right up until sort of near the end of the game. These little uh, troughs, or whatever they're called, stables, I believe, um, will make it a more valuable space essentially so you'll get you'll start to get points for them and they'll mean you can fit more animals on there because they've got a little place to drink what's important to note and what a lot of new players make the mistake of me included is that you don't have enough fences to fence off the whole thing in fact you have quite a few limited fences so you it looks like a lot but be aware that you are going to probably burn through all of them the first player has quite an advantage, so they only get two food uh, that they start with. Every other player will get three food. And remember, we need two food for each person we have by the end of turn four, turn seven, turn nine, and so on. You also start with two circles, which are representing your workers. So you've got two workers, so already I'm two food down. Because I'm the first player, I'm going to need to get some more food. Now, the bit which makes the game a bit more exciting is that you have these minor improvements and you have occupations. And you're going to have um, seven of each of these cards. If you are playing with uh, two players or things like that, you might need to reduce, uh, so this one, the berry picker, we can't have that in a two player game. So we might need to take some of these cards out. This one, for example, is fine for a one player game and so on and so forth. So some of them will be uh, removed if you're not playing with four or five players. There are a lot of cards. Start with the ones which say E on the bottom because that means that this is the easy deck. But then you have the uh, complex deck, you have the gaming deck, you have the interactive deck, which is probably my favorite deck where you actually start to do things uh, to other players. You have some really strange decks. Uh, you have the alien deck, which is mm, a bit broken in my opinion. Um, you even have, uh, I think this is the Czechoslovakian deck. So you've got some very strange decks. Start with the easy one. Um, if you've only got the base game, then that's probably all, all it will come with anyway. They add a lot of variety to the game. So because this, the actions are actually always going to be the same, it's the minor and major improvements, sorry, the minor improvements and the occupations that are going to make the difference. So we start with seven minor improvements. I'll go through just a few of them and you'll start to see what they are. So uh, I've got some really good ones here actually. So uh, we've got some strange ones, but hey, we'll go through it. So this is a nice setup. These are the seven ones that I'll get. And some of the spaces will let you do something and a minor improvement. So if I just show you an example, if I go up to here, you can see that it says up here, starting player and or one minor improvement. So if I were, wasn't the starting player, I could go there, take the starting player dobber, or, or action, and uh, I would also get the minor improvement as well. So let's go down and have a look at what they are and get a better idea of what these sort of things, what advantages they confer. So drinking trough. Now your fenced off areas will only be able to hold two animals and the drinking trough, it costs two wood as you can see in the top corner, it lets you hold each extra space will hold two more animals and it's worth a victory point at the end. Okay, uh, this one, the private forest, place one wood on every remaining round space and at the start of the round you get a free wood. That's pretty cool. 
the Madonna. You can see the Madonna. So that uh, Private Forest had two food as a requirement. This one, I have to have already played two improvements, but it's worth two victory points, um, and that is essentially the idea there. So actually here I have to discard two played improvements, so that could be good, that could be bad, depending on what other improvements I have. The raft, you get uh, an additional one food or one reed, so that's nice. The building material one's interesting, because you can see it's got an arrow on it. And that means that I will get either one wood or one clay, so I can do that. It won't actually cost anything there, but then I pass it on to the player on my left. So that's going to do the round. So if I do it, someone else will benefit from it. And then if they haven't played any improvements, they'll actually have eight cards at that point. Clay supports makes it easier to turn your building from wood into clay. The dovecot gives you one food um, for um, rounds 10 to 14 and you get that for free at the end and that can be quite powerful because you won't have as many actions there to get food and of course it's worth two victory points as well and it's worth two stone uh, it costs two stone so we've got some interesting stuff um, for example the private forest having played the game I know that that's awesome because it gives you so much wood if I can get that out really early on in fact I have two uh, two food right here if I get that out in round one then I've effectively got 13 free wood from the private forest so that's really good so I've got these seven cards and they will sit with me and uh, I will be able to play them and people won't necessarily know what they are they are supposed to be hidden um, and I will get to play those in addition to that I will have occupations so I'll have things that I could uh, could do so again it's seven that you get um, a lot of people play with a drafting mechanic, so you draw more cards than maybe you would normally get, because some cards are very powerful, and obviously uh, that might mean that you, you really want one card above another. So let's just have a look at these seven cards. These are all random, uh, so I've not really <laughs> stacked the deck to show you any super powerful ones or anything like that. Um, but let's just have a little look at what they are. So we've got the Swineherd here. So whenever you build one fence, you may receive one stable. So that's good. That's the little buildings which make it easier to get more animals out. Um, the the thatcher makes it one raid less to build a room. So when you build a room, you're going to need the materials to build the room, but you're going to need to build the roof as well. And it also means that uh, certain other things are easier to do. The, harp, uh, the basket maker can make one reed into three food, so he's sort of like a powerful person compared to the basket maker's workshop. The bread seller, one food each time that a grain is baked by any player. So this one's actually quite interactive. If somebody else is baking, then um, I get some grain, which is nice. Um, the dancer, you get four food, which is nice uh, when you use the travelling player's space, and that's one space on the board. Uh, you've got the stockman, one cattle when you build a second stable, one bull, bull when you build your third, and one sheep when you build your fourth. So that's quite nice. I believe that synergizes quite well when you get a swine herd, because you'll get a free stable. So you can see if I can get the stockman out and the swine herd out, then that's going to make it really cool. And then finally the reed collector, and a bit like the, the private forest, you get four reed by getting him out. And in order to get these players out, you're going to have to take the uh, occupation space. And uh, your first one at this space is free, and then they're going to cost you a food to get out. There is another occupation space, and that's slightly more expensive. So the first and second occupations cost one, and then each occupation costs two food. These are very powerful. These aren't actually a very good hand, really, at least in my opinion. Um, they're very powerful, so getting these out tends to be the, the domain of a lot of people. That's their tactic. Early on, get a lot of uh, um, people out because it can give you some really powerful things. Um, so the, the basket maker would be very good to go with the reed collector. The bread seller is just generally good. The stockman and the swine herd sort of synergize very well as well. So I've got my seven cards. The final thing is you've got this really cool player aid which tells you how you win. And effectively, the game supports and rewards you for diversifying. If you have nothing of something, so if I have no fields or one field, I, I lose a point. If I have nothing of grain and so on and so forth, I will lose points. And then the more you get, the more uh, points you get. 
uh, cattle are a lot harder to get than sheep, which is why you need six cattle to get four points, but you need eight sheep to get um, the same. Over the side, it tells you what comes out. So we've seen that the first action that we had was sow or break bread. So we know that the other three will be sh uh, getting a sheep, making an improvement, and getting fences, which means we can start to lay uh, the fences on, on the tiles. Okay. The only point I would like to mention is that each empty space is going to be one minus point at the end of the game. So you need to try and fill your farm up. So with that, we'll do one quick turn, um, and then that's really uh, the intro video done. So we're back with um, the updated board. We've already turned this first action over, so we know that the action is either to sow, which will let us put um, our crops into a field, or um, to bake bread. We need an oven to bake bread, so we need to get the uh, major improvement out before we can do that. Now you'll notice there's suddenly a lot of tokens on the board. So I've taken my wood meeple. Now this is an expansion that comes with animal flavoured meeples and uh, this is a wood meeple, and this is a reed meeple. I believe the new, uh, the, uh, the new reprint actually comes with all of these as part of the game. So I think you will get these. So this base had two wood on it, this had one wood on it, this had a food on it, this had three wood. Now you notice there's some with arrows and red boxes, whereas this one doesn't have anything on it. So anyone with an arrow and a red box has this put on every round. So what you should do is you should put it on the red space, and then once you've filled up everything, you should move it into the sort of bucket. So you're probably thinking, why on earth would I take the one wood action when there's a three wood action there? And you're absolutely right, people would be much better off taking three wood than, uh, than one wood. But next turn, another wood is going to be added to that one wood space. Okay, another three wood will be added to the three wood space, but there will come a point where there's actually four wood on the one wood space, and there's only um, uh, uh, three wood on the three wood space. So the power, the actions get more powerful if people don't take them. So just briefly going through them, this gives us resources, this lets us play an occupation, wood, wood, clay. Travelling players lets us take a food. Remember if we played the dancer, the one of our people, that would mean we always took four food there. So he might be a good one to get out early because that would give me lots of food to get later um, occupations out. This lets us build a room. So a wooden room costs five wood and two reed. My top tip for new players is to try and get five wood and two reed in because around stage two, you're gonna have the family growth action, which essentially gives you an extra worker. And if you can be the first person who does that, then you're getting three turns a go to everyone else's two. The only downside is that that worker is going to require feeding. If you actually have the baby on the last turn of a round, so if I grow my family on the last turn of the round, it will cost me one food for that person, because it's a baby. Uh, if it's grown, if it's uh, doing its job as a worker, it will cost me two food. Um, so carrying on, you've got the starting player and a minor improvement. You get some grain. This is generally the only way you can get grain is to take that space. Um, some occupations will give you grain and vegetables for going there, but we didn't get any of them. This is ploughing a field. Ploughing a field, you need a ploughed field before you can actually um, before you can actually plant crops on it. So you would take one of these squares and then you would place it on your board. Um, and that's effectively it. So, what I would do is I would take my two dobbers and I would go and then everyone else would go and then I would go again. So I'd take my dobber and you can't go wrong with wood so I would take the three wood. So I'll put it here and I'll take three wood and that would go into my supply. Okay. And then everyone else would go and maybe a few of the options had been gone so maybe I'd have to go and plough a field. And that would mean I'd take this space, and then I would go down to my one, and I would put it on. And I'll put it on all the way over here. I don't want to put it too close to my buildings, because if I fence my building off, I won't be able to grow my building. You have to put another room next to the, uh, the adjacent rooms. Additionally, if I've got a wood house 
all of my new rooms have to be wood. If I've got a clay house, all of my new rooms have to be clay, and so on and so forth. So, at that point, after everyone's placed, you take the things back. So, back these come, and they go back to my houses. You've got to be very careful that you don't play around with your extra minions, because you could end up taking a third action, which would be bad. And then you start filling up the spaces again. This is quite a lot of upkeep, and in his uh, sort of prior game to this, or sorry, no, latter game to this, the one after this, he uh, developed this very cool rondel mechanic that means you don't have to constantly be updating all of these things because it takes quite a long time uh, to do. So we put in our wood, we put in our two clay on this base, so you're getting an idea of how a turn plays out. Um, we put a clay here, we put in our reed. Okay, and then we will turn this and see what we've got, and we've got a major improvement. Let's just fast forward a bit just to see some of the other actions. So uh, here we've got a sheep, and uh, these are probably my favourite of all of the pieces, a sheep ball. So uh, you get a little baby sheep. Okay, so here he is, and he will go on there. Okay, and you can see that this is going to grow by one a turn. Now one of the cool things is even if you don't have um, a, a field for your sheep, you can keep one as a family pet. So you can always take one animal into your house, but you can't take one per room unless you have a special card. And then finally we have fences. So let's say I've taken some wood, I've been very good with my wood. Now at the moment I have two actions, okay, and let's say that sheep has grown as well. And uh, so now there's two sheep in there because no one wants to take the sheep early on and they get bigger and bigger. So I've got two actions. My first action with all this wood I've got here will be to go and take that fences space. And what fences let us do is one wood to build a fence. And I actually have six wood. So I go back to my board and I've got my cool little, uh, um, my, my plowed field here and I can chop in all six of this wood, so that goes back into the pool. Uh, it doesn't get added onto the actual board, it will just uh, be available for use later on. And that means I can buy six of these fences. Okay, so I'm gonna place my six fences here. Now when you're building fences, you have to ring off a whole area. So if I only had five wood, I wouldn't be able to do that. I would have to complete the area. Um, otherwise I would be stuck. So, I've got my six uh, wood, I've got my lovely fence. Each of these spaces can hold two animals. If I put a stable in there, now each of these spaces can hold four animals. So it doubles the number of animals you can have in your fenced area. I go back up, I have a look at those little sheepies, and I say, oh, they're too juicy to, take, uh, to pass up, so I put my worker on there, and then I have my sheep down here. Okay, so, you'll notice we're at the end of a round, so that's the end of a round, we now have the harvest phase. So, we take our guys back, and I need two food for each worker I have. Now again, I'm sort of uh, fudging it a little bit here. Let's say at some point I had actually built my fireplace. So it actually cost three clay, so I had to have got three clay in at this point. Um, and you look here, and I only have two food, which is a shame, because I need four food to feed these both these guys. So now I have an option. I can either suck it up and take two begging cards. If I take two begging cards, they'll stay with me because I'm short for two food. So I take two cards, and that's minus six points at the end of the game, which would suck. But, because I've, I've eaten, I've begged, after you've eaten, I would then get to have a breeding phase. So, my two sheepies, they get it on, and then uh, I have a little extra sheepie. So now I have three. And hopefully you can start to see how the visual aspect of this game can be quite clear. So if I look over to my neighbour and they've got tons of sheep and cows and horses and pigs and stuff like that, then I can see that they're doing well. And that's the beauty of it. That's what makes it such a brilliant game. 
Alternatively, I've got the fireplace, so I could just eat one of my sheep. So I lead him into my little house. <laughs> little does he know, he goes into the fireplace, he dies, it's very sad, and, uh, and then he becomes too delicious food. I have lamb for dinner, like a kofta, maybe a bit of mint sauce, you know, maybe even some chilli sauce, I don't know. I now have four food, I don't take the begging cards, and then of course uh, I can pay my four food and we'll carry on like that. So that's in essence the game. There are more actions. The only one which I'd say is worth noting is uh, there's a family growth action and the plowing, uh, the, the sowing action. If you take the sowing action, so say I have, um, so let's just go and have a look at the sowing action. So the sewing action, uh, you can, it's very clear. I mean, the, uh, the symbols make it very clear. You can see that I've got, you basically take a grain, the grain that you have, and you add two grain to it. So if we go back to my board and show you exactly how that would work, uh, you go down here, okay, I take a sewing action, so I take this guy off, I place it on the sewing action. I take the grain I have in my store, and then on top of that, I will get two more grain. And in the next harvest, I'll take one back, and it will go there. In the following harvest, I'll take one back, and it will go there. And then in the third harvest, I'll take one back, and it will go there, and my field will be ready for harvesting again. And that's really how it works. For vegetables, you only get one extra, so it's not as efficient with vegetables, unless you have a potato dibber, I think it's called, which gets more. Also worth mentioning is any uh, grain you have like this on a field at the end of the game, all of them are counted for points purposes. Um, the only other thing is, say we've expanded our house a little bit and we've, uh, we've got a third room, so we're ripe for having kids. Uh, it's, uh, it's getting summery I suppose, so I suppose the first phase is kind of uh, spring, which is why you can do loads of stuff. So let's say we've fast forwarded all the way through to um, to round two now. So if you go back up, I've flipped up, and you can see we've got loads more actions now. So we've got the ability to get stone, we can turn our, 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 our house from wood into clay, and then we could build one of those fireplaces or things like that, or one of our minor improvements. But then finally, we have this family growth. So family growth, what you do is you take your dobber from your board, and you put one on there, and then you have a baby, so you put a second one on there, and uh, when you take them back at the end of the round, lo and behold, you get the three dobbers out. And now you have three actions for the rest of the game. So that's really the uh, essence of Agricola in a nutshell. It really does snowball at the end, you get lots and lots of cool stuff, but it's a really enjoyable game. It's very easy to understand how you get points, you've got these cards which will help you, but generally more is better, which makes things pretty easy to understand. Um, it's very, very fun. My only criticism that I would level at it is when you play with gamer, proper, proper gamers, they're all about the best action and it can cause analysis paralysis. So I've had a couple of games where uh, it's not as enjoyable, but then that's for a per speaking as a person who, who likes a fast paced game and enjoys it a great deal. Um, but I think it's really, really nice. Kids are going to love it as well, especially with the Animeeples. So you've got the sheep. I haven't really shown you the other ones, uh, but with the base game, you get the cow. Moo. Okay, so there's a little cow. And you get a piggy as well, which is kind of cool. This is piggy. Piggies and stone look kind of similar. Uh, but you get little piggies and you get little cows. And of course they uh, breed. And it's, it's nice. It's just a really clever, uh, sort of delightful, thematically strong Euro game. So hopefully we enjoyed that. Um, I'll be doing uh, one on Clash of, uh, instructional video on Clash of Cultures when it arrives. Um, and uh, yeah, stay tuned.